Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Pascovicius. I work at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. I'm an assistant professor, uh, early career uh, assistant professor working in a faculty of education where I um, offer courses in education technology. Uh, part of the groups that I teach are future teachers. Some are already teachers. And um, we also do some work with people who work in um, organizational learning. Um, and I do graduate supervision as well as uh, teach. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have this role. Love it. Um, so I pitched an idea for um, a fellowship that looks at how best to introduce principles of open education to new or early career teachers uh, because I've got the position in which I'm able to interact with many teachers. Uh, I wanted to reach out to the community to see uh, what were the most important um, philosophies or underlying uh, big ideas around open education that I could bring into some of my curriculum. Yeah, the fellowship was a great opportunity to reconnect with the Gojian network. I had long been um, a member while I was doing my PhD and I saw the opportunity as a great way to reconnect, um, share an idea with colleagues in the network and beyond. And uh, we were given an opportunity to share our ideas uh, amongst the Gojian community early on through uh, an online session where we kind of put our early, maybe half-baked ideas out there a little bit and got some really tremendous feedback um, from the group. So that's something I've not always been able to do in my own research. Um, I guess I could uh, put it out there more explicitly, and I think that's one thing I'm taking away from the fellowship is how how much value in uh, how much value there is in getting those ideas shared early, get the feedback. Um, you meet some potential partners in research or those that share similar interests along the way. Um, they become great uh, folks to bounce ideas off. Um, so that was fantastic. And then an, another opportunity came in the um, OER 22 conference where we, uh, I think all three of our the fellows presented and also <laughs> got some tremendous feedback from an even broader community. So that's worked out really well. I, um, I designed a survey to collect data from the open education community. Um, I didn't get as many responses as I had hoped for. Um, so I still plan to um, promote that further as um, here in North America, things are starting to come alive again in universities and uh, schools. So I think I may still be able to get uh, some more feedback. The feedback I've got so far is um, there's not a lot of responses, but the, the responses are rich. So the folks that did take time to contribute really offered quite a bit in terms of um, their ideas around what's what's most important for new teachers to to be aware of around open education. Um, probably that idea I just mentioned about getting things out there early. I've got to um, kickstart my blog again and perhaps share some of those early ideas for research. Um, I kind of mentioned before, it's it's often kind of scary to be putting those ideas out early just because you might think they're not well developed yet or, um, you know, that um, it might be just a little bit um, anxiety inducing to, to put things out early, but I found real value in that, especially through this process. Um, we had, a, of course, a wonderfully vibrant community in the GoGN network um, and people were really came with a critical lens, but also um, very um, friendly uh, feedback. So that was just um, really helpful to get the project 
off to the right start. And it, it did change quite a bit from my original sketch. Um, so that was super valuable. That's a takeaway that I'll um, probably try to build into my research. Um, and also um, move forward. Um, you know, this work has impacted how I'll approach my teaching. So, um, and that's still always ongoing, uh, in an ongoing state of flux. Um, but I think it's really important for teachers to be aware of and understand some of the possibilities of open education. It's not as, um, at least in my context, it's not as um, commonly done as part of teacher education programs. So I think we have a real opportunity to share the possibilities ways of, of course, as a new teacher, seeking um, ideas for teaching, um, ideas for assessment, ideas for um, approaching different types of um, ideas, and also maybe one day contributing. It's one thing I, I talk to some of my students about is well, there are ways you could also contribute. They're not quite there yet. It's the finding and um, using openly licensed resources to support their teaching and maybe one day um, thinking about giving back. So it's kind of a bit of a progression there. So that's part of, I think, what I've learned and it will take away. Yeah, challenge, of course, is um, a fellowship in a short time. Um, it was, uh, I think, started in about April or May and culminating in August, but it was not ending. <laughs> I'm still going to continue this um, because it's it's really something I'm passionate about, and it will take time to develop and write. Uh, eventually, we'll hopefully want to write a, a report or a research paper to capture some of these ideas. Um, so it's been a challenge to get that done in the short amount of time, but uh, I've still got um, the energy to take it forward. So time is always an issue. Summertime can be an issue because um, it's the there's some time off um, that I took as well as um, other people I'm sure are taking, and that may have also contributed to um, some challenges getting people to respond to to the survey. So um, I'll ramp it up again in September and, and hope for the best. Um, but I learned a lot about. Um, you know, design thinking through the design of a survey, um, getting some really meaningful feedback early on from my fellow fellows about the survey. Um, uh, so nothing insurmountable. Yeah, the Gojian Network um, has created a space and a community for sharing ideas about open education research. So from that initial meeting back in, you know, spring, where we had an opportunity to share our ideas and get the feedback from the group, uh, that was tremendous and gave us a platform for getting those ideas out early. Um, we've also had several meetings with uh, the GoGN team members uh, providing feedback on um, the project as well, which has been super helpful. Um, and in the back channels, uh, I've had quite a few conversations with folks, um, including fellow fellows, but also others who saw the research and were interested in that idea. Um, so all of those means of community are, I think, what GoGN supported me with most um, and giving uh, opportunities and place and space for sharing of ideas. So that has been a tremendous help and support. And that's just in this fellowship. I can talk about in my PhD um, quite a bit more about um, what the GoGN network has offered. But in the fellowship, it's been a great supportive chance to do some authentic research of interest and get lots of feedback along the way um, in, a, in a very, very safe and friendly community.
Yeah, so I mentioned I'm sort of early career um, faculty member now uh, working at the University of Victoria. Um, you know, I've got a lot of work to do to uh, show that I'm um, able to do this work and um, be successful with teaching, research and service. Um, the fellowship has helped tremendously in that it's given me um, a connection to a global organization where uh, it's, it's a reputable organization in the open education world, perhaps I would argue maybe one of the most um, in terms of research in open education. Um, so that looks fantastic um, as part of my CV that gets uh, reviewed regularly. And um, the research itself should result in a publication, which would will also be fantastic. Um, I've had some opportunities for service through sharing the ideas and um, sharing them, the research at uh, a couple conferences, and it will impact my teaching. So I'm going to be teaching um, 35, maybe 70 uh, teacher candidates uh, starting in two weeks. Um, and what I've learned along the way about open education and what the values and principles that our community feels are most important for new teachers, those will come into my teaching and I'll have a chance to um, get some feedback from students as well about uh, how that how that fits within the landscape of learning they're doing in a teacher education program. There's lots of connections um, with open education and accessibility um, and um, you know, multiple voices and perspectives, um, lots of different synergies between, I think, our teacher education philosophy and those of open education. So I'm trying to put those pieces together as much as I can. So it, it, it's impacted my research, my service, and my teaching. So in terms of um, my own development in this role, it's been a huge uh, benefit. I would say go for it. <laughs> if you're doing a fellowship, you probably already know the network well, and you know how supportive it can be to um, getting your research um, a little bit more out there. One of the things we've always talked about, or I've talked about with a number of GoGN fellows, or not fellows, members um, largely, um, is how isolating it can be doing some of this research at a ho your home institution. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have an open ed community of people working uh, at your university or school, um, that's fantastic, but often you don't. Uh, I know when I did my research, I was really the only one in the research group um, doing open education uh, themed work. So just so nice to have uh, the network where you can bounce ideas off and people are working on the same set of problems globally. It's tremendous. So um, I would say if you know all that, <laughs> you can do a fellowship as well and um, have some great support and um, some motivation brought on by the, the timing um, and also um, be able to reconnect with the network. Because I think as you graduate um, out of your program, I was, I know I was really like thinking, well, how do, how will I still connect with that network? What can I offer now? I'm not a PhD student. Um, so fellowship is a great um, place to, to participate and uh, looking for other opportunities to, to give back to the network as well, where, where, it, where it's appropriate. So I would say um, go for it. It's exciting. You'll get to reconnect with some folks uh, that you came through the network with. Both Vivian and um, Catherine are individuals I had a chance to connect with during my PhD, and now we are all graduates. And it was just fun to to share and and see what their their work is focused on now and where their interest lies. And there's a lot of synergies in our projects as well. So there may be future collaborations. So um, it's just uh, worth it. Yeah, it's it's um, again, it's just hugely valuable 
to know where the open ed researchers are around the world, um, new or established. Um, so I'm happy to be part of that constellation. <laughs> and um, being um, as part of a community that's working in open education, established uh, or new, and um, being able to share those ideas. And uh, um, there's been so many opportunities um, for contributing to the research handbook or a special issue of a journal. Um, it's, it's just been really, um, there's been lots of opportunities to contribute where you see fit. Not everybody can contribute to every opportunity, but um, it looks like the network's large enough that um, you can pull together a pretty amazing research handbook. You can get a special issue published out of a journal. So I, I just, I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's got to be very difficult to facilitate this global network, but I, uh, I honestly feel from my corner of the globe here in Victoria, I feel very well connected and supported. And uh, I always am happy to share um, that I was part of the network. I'm still part of the network and I've done a fellowship. I always, um, I have some graduate students now who are interested in open education. I refer them to um, the opportunity to connect, just get on the list. And um, every time uh, an email comes through, there's some value or interesting uh, activity uh, being shared. Uh, and there's other ways to contribute as well through the webinars. And, and um, is there, I don't know if there is a, an asynchronous back channel chat to like a Slack or anything like that, that would probably be helpful too. Um, yeah, I feel pretty well connected, pretty well supported and uh, very proud um, to have had uh, the opportunity to work with all these great people. It's really impacted my research and it continues to. It can be isolating as a graduate student and if you can find your community um, and you're working in open education or even working in education technology more broadly, I think that you can find a lot of value in this network. Um, and I, I wish there were more. <laughs> I wish there were more um, great research networks, um, especially ones that really focus on supporting graduate students. Um, what I would say to anyone who's thinking about joining the network and is doing research in this area, I'm really interested in your research. I'd love to hear about it. And I'd be open to a conversation if if that would help. So I think that um, there's not much risk in joining the network. There's a lot of benefit. Um, and uh, if nothing else, you will see that the research you're doing is of global importance and um, it has different types of importance for different areas of the world. Um, and we can all learn from that. And um, you can have some really, really valuable conversations with people in other contexts. Um, yeah, I've said most of it, but just that I've had a really positive experience being part of the network and the fellowship is not any different. It's been just great great chance to connect with colleagues and get the ideas out there early, practice a little bit more of open research, of which um, I haven't always done just because it's scary, but um, I've learned that um, the benefits of getting things out there early can actually be huge. I, uh, I, made, a, I made several contacts um, by getting that idea out early. Uh, one of the people I met we actually had a great conversation and put a proposal in for a conference to do a, a presentation. So um, that's really, really meaningful. And um, I have a, a new colleague there, as well as several others who just have a similar interest in this space um, with teacher education and open openness. Um, and so that's been hugely, hugely valuable. Uh, and those folks aren't even in the network, but now they're kind of aware that 
I'm doing this work as part of a fellowship, so broadening uh, awareness of Gojian perhaps, and also um, strengthening the um, the net this, the the sub network of folks interested in uh, teacher education and open education. So um, that's another thing you might consider around um, the network is you've probably got all these sort of little um, clusters, right? Uh, sort of the MOOC crew. You've got your um, open education and higher education, open textbooks, uh, K to 12 and open education, corporate open education, perhaps. Um, it'd be interesting to, um, to sort of um, to see all the activity happening in that. Again, back to the constellation, a constellation of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, can't I can't find it. But and there's all kinds of little sub networks happening, and those might be interesting to foster as well, because those folks are probably all around the world too. And um, yeah, so hugely valuable and very thankful. And uh, we'll speak highly of the network from the perspective of both a graduate student, my experience as a graduate student, and now as a fellow and alumni.